Happy Thursday to everybody. How are you? It feels like it has been forever since we have been together. I'm going to pull this up on my phone real quick, and then we will get started. It gives everybody a second, because there's a little bit of a delay when I go through StreamYard anyway. So, all right. Hi guys. Oh, I can hear myself. <laughs> all right. Hi, Donna. Hi, Jessica. How are you? So good to see you guys. All right. So it has been kind of a minute, right? It's been since last week, since I've seen a lot of you. I've already seen the hardwired group. I saw them yesterday, but the regular group, I'm just now getting to see you guys uh, since last week. So hi, Cynthia. Hi, Donna. Hi, Joy. Hi, Nicole. It's so good to see you guys. I hope you guys have had a good week. I missed you guys. Did you miss me? I hope you did. <laughs> Maybe you didn't, and that's okay. That's okay. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Jennifer. Everybody is trickling on in. You guys, Joan and Colleen are in the house today. So <laughs> I love it when they're here. I love it when they're here. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Miss Shayla. Hi, Holly. Happy Thursday indeed, my friend. So good to see you guys. Cooper says hi, too. <laughs> All right, so let's let's chat. Let's chat a minute because I got a couple things to talk to you guys about. So first and foremost, I just want to go ahead and give you a heads up as to what our project for today is going to be. So we're putting together a necklace using the bargain beadbox beads from this past month for August. It was August's box, right? Not July's box. I always get it a little bit confused, but it's the latest one. So those are the beads that we're going to be using. However, don't feel like you can't do this if you don't have the bargain bead box beads, because chances are you've got something in your stash that is going to um, look very similar, or you can use in the same kind of way to recreate this project. This project is super, super easy. Um, there's not anything super hard about it at all. We are going to use some glue, which is something that I don't normally do. So we're getting the glue out today. We're going to make a mess. Um, but it's going to be a pretty necklace that I think will can easily be recreated with things that you've already got if you don't have the bargain bead box. Um, however, if you don't have the bargain bead box, I highly, highly recommend it because it is such a great value. There are great beads in it. And I, I, I think I've only been like kind of bummed about the box maybe twice. And it was just not because of what was in it, but just because it wasn't necessarily my style, right? Otherwise, it's always phenomenal and I'm always happy to get it. And for the price, you can't beat it. So I can't fault them if they don't if they don't meet my personal loves every single month. You know what I'm saying? It's just so um, let's see. So what else do we have going on? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, tomorrow, of course, is our Feel Good Friday show. And for those of you who were paying attention last Friday, we still have our Maker Mixes going on and we've got a little contest going on with those. So I'll talk more about that tomorrow because I have some more Maker Mixes that are coming out tomorrow as well. Um, but don't forget about that. If you've bought a Maker Mix from last week or previously and um, or are looking forward to the ones that are coming out tomorrow, that is still going on as well. And then let's see, what else do I have to mention? I remember, I remember. So for those of you who are new to this community, you may or may not know that I have several different Facebook groups. I have the Sarah Lovecraft Designs community. I have the um, the D -stash, Inspiration Station D Stash, which is just a D Stash for your stuff. Um, I have the Hardwired group, which is a little bit harder projects, and it is a paid for group. So you pay monthly or quarterly to be a member there. And then last but not least, I have the Straighten Your Crown group, which is a community based group that is non jewelry related, though a lot of us are jewelry makers that are there. But the Straighten Your Crown group is just a support community for the troubles and the celebrations that you go through in life, right? Because sometimes you just need somebody or you need a place that is safe where you can vent and let out your frustrations or you can go and celebrate your victories. And there is a wonderful group of people there that are there to support you regardless of the ups or the downs. Now, the reason that I'm bringing this up is because we're currently doing something over in the Straighten Your Crown group that you may be interested in. So if you've not joined that group, maybe this will be an incentive for you to come and be a part of it. We're doing a challenge 
and it is called 100, 100 Happy People Challenge. And um, it basically is just where over the next 40 days, we are going to go above and beyond to uh, make 100 people happy no matter what that looks like, right? But you're going to go above and beyond your regular, right? If you just normally do things out of the goodness of your heart to help people and make them happy, you're going to have to take it a little bit further than that, right? And we are asking that you, you know, share your stories of the 100 happy people journey um, over on the Straighten Your Crown group so that we can all celebrate. Now, the reason why this is going on is because a lot of the people in the Straighten Your Crown group are facing a lot of struggles. There are some happy and wonderful victories and celebrations that are going on there, but there are some people who are really struggling with their own inner happiness and um, having some trouble with, you know, making themselves happy. And I have found th over the years that the quickest way to make yourself happy is to step outside of yourself and to give to others in some capacity, it really kind of, you know, it grows your own happiness. So if you're interested in being a part of that, come and join us in the Straighten Your Crown group and sign up for the 100 Happy People Challenge. It's, it's, it's life changing. I know it sounds simple and it might even seem a little kitschy or cheesy, but I promise it works. Okay. So all of that being said, let's get down to business. Oh, wait, hold on. Kathy's got a reminder. Just a reminder, the hardwired membership will open at the end of the month. So if you're interested in being a part of that group, you have to wait until the open enrollment happens. Okay. All right. So let's get down to business. Let's take a look at some of the beads that are in the bargain bead box. And then let's put together an easy necklace using those things. All right. Get you turned around here. And we are going to get started. I do not have a beginner's class yet. A lot of the projects that we do here are um, very beginner friendly. Um, but I do have that in my mind, actually, Ellie. Um, I, I am considering putting together some beginner workshops. So definitely stay tuned for all of that. Because I would love to be able to give that to you guys. Okay. So... The bargain bead box, for those of you who don't know, is is always, it always has a theme monthly, right? And I can't remember what they called this one, but this one was, bless you, um, this one was pinks, kind of rosy pinks and flowers and butterflies. I seem to remember wild their, huh? I think it was wildflowers. Wildflowers. That seems about right, because there's a bunch of flowers in here. And there are a bunch of butterflies. So I just wanted to kind of give you just like a quick over. Look at these, how beautiful they are. Those are so pretty. Like, I just want to make plain earrings out of these. I don't even want to do anything crazy. Wildflower Meadow. Thank you. That is right. You were so close, Colleen. You had it Almost. right. Almost had it. Almost had it. Some more little butterflies. Lots of flowers. There are these check glass butterflies that are center drilled in purple. There are bead caps. There are check glass leaves. There is this pendant with a pressed flower in it. I mean, it's just, a, it's really, really beautiful. Really beautiful mix. So I wanted to take this mix and put together a necklace for you guys. And this is actually what's left over. This is the stuff that I haven't used, right? If that is any indication to you guys at all, I made an entire necklace and still had a bunch of this left over. Peggy says, who makes them? This is the bargain bead box. So if you just Google bargain bead box, it's going to come up. They also have a shopping site called bead box bargains, which I tend to always get mixed up. But once you um, are a member of the bead box bargains, you can, or a bargain bead box, you can shop on the bead box bargains website. <laughs> That's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. All right, so this is what was left over. Let's play with what I what I actually did use out of this. This is a ton of stuff, by the way. And guys, it's under twenty dollars. Okay, I mean, like you can't you can't beat that. You cannot beat that. Okay, so hi, Red. All right. So for today's project, there were these little. Look at these. This is what inspired my, my necklace. These petals. How beautiful are these? These are little glass 
petals. I would probably call them check glass. I don't know for sure, but they're glass petals for sure. They're drilled in the front and they are like this beautiful, deep, deep pink, but they also have a shimmery gold to them. And that's what I wanted to build my entire necklace around. So I pulled these out. There were five of them. And I wanted to do like a tiered, kind of a staggered uh, statement piece, if you will, if you will, using these. So I laid them out. And this one already has some things attached to it, um, but we're gonna we're gonna do some of these ourselves. Um, but that's I was kind of going for this this kind of look in the front. And I also wanted to incorporate some of the check glass leaves. Some of these already have some jump rings on them, but for the most part, we're gonna do the rest of this and definitely the assemblage of this ourselves. But I did wanna show you all of the beads and the little connectors that we're using for our project. So the, this is the color palette that we're gonna be using to put together the center of our necklace. Also included were um, a couple, I think there were three toggles and I pulled two of them and I'm just gonna use the ring portion of the toggles as part of our necklace, not actually as a toggle, but um, as part of the actual design itself. So I pulled two of these out and the third one I'm actually gonna use as a, right, a real toggle for the clasp. I'm going to sit all of this aside because I'm going to show you what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to take some faux suede lace. And this one already has the jump rings on it because this is the one that I'm, I'm going to use while we let the glue dry on the one we put together. But I used a piece of chain that was not included, though there is some chain included. Um, what I'm using is like a medium curb chain. I don't know exactly what it's called, but it is, it's got, it has that, that curb chain kind of twist to it. Um, but I'm using a medium curb chain and I've taken a piece of faux suede lace and I have just thread it through the links. And then I have used some fabric glue to glue this down on the back, right? So when you're looking at it from the front, you don't see that, which makes a really cool bracelet, might I add. Um, but we're gonna use it as the centerpiece for our necklace. So we're gonna put this together. Okay, so I pulled out a piece of chain that is about the length that we need here. Okay, and you can see what the chain looks like without anything on it. So definitely a medium sized chain and a lot of different kinds of chains will work. Hold on, let me show you what I mean. So I actually have this, I do this quite frequent, frequently because uh, it's one of my favorite things. So this one was a little bit different style of chain right? But I, I did it the exact same way by threading through a piece of that faux suede lace. And it's just a little bit, it's just a little heavier of a chain, you can see. And then this one was an even smaller chain. This one was a really tight fit with the faux suede lace, but you can see what it looks like when you thread that through there. So that's what we're going to do here. Okay. So I've got a piece of my chain ready and I've got a piece of the lace. Now I like to skip over the first opening here, the first link of the chain and the last link. I don't do anything with those because those are the ones that I'm going to use to attach uh, a jump ring or other hardware to. But what I want to do is I want to thread my faux suede lace through there and I pull way more than I need, right? leave myself a tail that I can kind of hold on to. Now, to make this easy on myself, I, I hold out the chain. I actually spread it apart with my fingers here. So I'm holding on to one end and then I have the other end up here between my first and my middle finger. That just holds the links out nice and straight and tight. It makes it a little bit easier to weave this lace through there. It's harder when it is just slack like that to get the to get the leather through there or the faux suede lace whatever you're using right so it's just really simple um it's just a really simple back and forth so we're going to take the tail of this we're going to go through the next link link going through the face and pull okay and then for the next link i'm going to come up through it right pull. I'm going to go down through the next. 
And the entire time that I'm working, I'm making sure to straighten it out because my suede lace is, it has a flat surface to it. I don't want it twisted. I want it to lay nice and flat so that it looks really clean when we get done. Okay, so I'm coming up through the next link and I'm gonna go down through the next link, right? So we're just weaving it in and out of each one of the links of the chain. Now, if your chain is a little bit smaller, it might be, it may take a little extra time. You won't be able to go as fast, but it doesn't really take a whole lot of time to do this. All right, so we're just weaving back and forth. Fuss at him, somebody fuss at him. He's chewing on his self. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Discipline that dog. <laughs> Poor Albert, he has the allergies. <laughs> Okay, so just going to keep going. And as far as the, the middle section of this is concerned, it can be as long or as short as you want it to be. Uh, if you're going to do a bracelet, you want to you want to do at least seven and a half inches of the chain. If you're going to do the center of a necklace, I'll take a measurement of this one that's finished here in just a second so that you'll know exactly. Okay. So I've made it through this portion, but I need to kind of straighten out some more. So I'm just going to kind of slide it down and hold on to it in different places. Um, but I do want to straighten the chain out, right? Don't let it have any twists in it. Okay. Down through the next. Hi, Marsha. So, <laughs> so looking at Susie's comment, was somebody mean on Meredith's live? Oh, that's not nice. Oh, we, love we do love Meredith. Somebody, she wasn't the, apparently the lady wasn't fussing at Meredith. She was fussing at the, the peanut gallery. <laughs> All our people that were having fun. She's fussing at them. Oh, uh, the live wires over there? Uh, the, probably. <laughs> <laughs> People don't know what to do when the live wires show up. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> yes, people don't know how to take me on some of the shows I go on. It's not yours. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Catherine. You're not too late. We're just stringing some faux suede lace through some chain. You can see what it's what it's looking like. See how cool that looks when you get it through there all the way? We've got one more. I've got one more link to go through. I'm going to come up through this one. Now, I have to check because even though I don't like to use the last link, I need for my faux suede lace to finish like the front or the start and the finish to be on the same side, which it just happens to be on this one. So the reason why is because I'm actually going to fold this back and glue it down on either side. And I want it to definitely be on the back, right? So I need both of them to be coming out on the same side. So we got lucky with that. If we didn't, I would just go through this last, this last link or add an extra link to your chain. Cause I do like to try to keep that last link open if possible. Okay, so to secure this, my, the tried and true way to do this. Now you can get technical with it and you can wire wrap and you can do all kinds of crazy things if you want to, but I really want to just keep this as simple as possible. So I'm gonna use glue. And you guys know, if you've been with me for a while, you know that I don't generally enjoy glue in my jewelry making. That is just not something that I like to use. But there are times when glue is the answer to the problem. 
And that's what's going to be the answer to this problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut off some of this. I'm going to leave myself about an inch to two inches of this behind. And then we'll trim some more of it off after we glue down. But I'm going to trim both ends just so that I don't have an excessive amount of this. Now, before we move on, let me, let me tell you what the measurement on the finished one is. In case you're wanting to do this exactly the way that I do it. So my finished piece of chain here is right at four and a half inches. Okay. So if you, if you want to do your, your focal, the same as mine, four and a half inches of the chain is what you're going to need. Okay. So <clears throat> this one, I am actually going to use some fabric glue for this. Now you don't have to, I'm using some of the Aline's um, super fabric adhesive. Um, but you can use super glue for this. If you're going to use super glue for this, though, I would probably use gel. I don't like to use the other stuff just because it tends to leave that funky kind of haze on things, particularly uh, fabrics. So I'm going to use some of this. Don't mind the messy of it because it really is a hot mess. And it is probably pretty dried up, too. But that's what wire scraps are for, right? And then I'm just going to use a little piece of paper here <laughs> as a note on it where I need to order. I need to make an order. But so I just use my wire scraps to clean out whatever clumps are in there. And then I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit of this onto a scrap piece of paper because it doesn't take a lot. Right. So we just need a little bit. A little glob will do. And I'm going to use my wire scrap to get about half of that. And I'm going to put it in one of the sections here at the end between two links of the chain. Okay. I really need a new jar or a new little container of this stuff because mine is very clumpy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that faux suede lace. I'm going to fold it over. So I'm folding it over the last link that we went through, right? And folding this to the back to glue it. What is happening here? Come on. Okay. I'm going to pinch it down with my fingers, right? Just like that. And I'm going to let it sit, right? Because you can't use this just yet. You have to let this sit and dry before you can go any further. So it takes about 30 minutes for this to set up strong enough for you to come back and work with it. But I wouldn't wear it until it sat for about 12 hours. Okay. But 30 minutes is going to be plenty of time to then come back and add beads or whatever you're going to do. Now we're going to do the same thing down here on the other end, making sure that we fold over in the same spot so that our folds are definitely on the back. So I'm going to pick up another little glob of my glue here, put that on. If I can keep it onto the leather and not my finger, that would be great. Okay. And then I'm going to push it down. <laughs> Patty says, I suddenly feel like I need to order 24 gauge and 18 gauge German style wire. <laughs> now, why would you say that? Yeah, that's on my list here. Uh, I got some 18 gauge wire today, thanks to Joan. But I bought out Hobby Lobby she in two out, different cities. She bought out Hobby Lobby in two different cities. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, so again, I'm gonna let that sit before I do anything, and you can you can clean off whatever is kind of mushing out the edges. It really doesn't take a lot. And the cool thing about the fabric glue is that it dries kind of gummy. So you can come in and literally like trim off the glue that is, if you have any, that's seeping out the side. That's one of the reasons why I like it, because you can't really do that with super glue. It doesn't get gummy where you can trim it off, but this stuff does. So what I would do is after this has dried, I would trim this right where the glue part has is done right so I would just trim this off right there and then I would come over here to this one lift it up and trim off right there then these folded over pieces will actually be on the back so you'll never even see them when you're looking at this from the front right so that's to me that's just the easiest way to do this if you want to wire wrap it or you want to do something fancy you can but 
there really is no reason why you can't, um, <laughs> Sadie, Sadie says, I need to get my pennies together to send Sarah some new glue. <laughs> I, all my glues look like that though. Right. But it just means that they've been, they, they, they get, they get a lot of use. Right. <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, I'm going to sit this one to the side and let it dry. Okay. We've got one. <laughs> We've got one that's already ready. And this one actually already has my jump rings on it. And the reason that I didn't take them off was because they were already marked, right? And so I'm kind of cheating a little bit with my jump rings. They're already placed on here so that I don't have to guess where I'm going to hang things. But you can see this one is nice and dry. So this is the back, right? And that's where the fold over is. This one's fold was a little bit longer than, than the one we just did. And then this one as well, it's folded over. Those are on the back, so you never see them, right? Okay, so this is going to be the center of our necklace. And, of course, you can see I've added jump rings to this in in the little places where I want to hang all my, my beady goodness from, all my dangles, because you know I love the dangles. So we're going to build those, right? So <clears throat> let's, let me pull up the picture here, because I want to be sure I get this exactly like I did it. Okay, so in the center is going to be one of the longest of our little bead dangles. So this one is already done. We'll, we'll build two more of these. So we have a connector that came in the, the bargain bead box. We have one of these really cool beads and then one of our petals. I wire wrapped those with some 22 gauge wire and use some six millimeter jump rings. That's going to mark my center. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up that jump ring and attach that to this so that I can build outwards from there. Okay. So I'm going to come in with my chain nose pliers and I'm just going to go ahead and attach this one. Now we're going to put a couple of these on here. Okay. So that one goes in the center, the width of the cord. So the width of the cord that I'm using is doo -doo -doo -doo, two millimeters. You got two millimeters on that faux suede lace. Fred says, oh, the dangles. You know it. You know it. So on either side of this, I actually want to put these little guys. Okay. So it is one of the check glass leaves with a larger jump ring and then these little green check glass bicones. So those are going to go on either side of our centerpiece here. So I have two of these that are already ready. We'll attach those in just a minute. But let's go ahead and build the two that we don't have ready yet. And then we'll we'll make some of these. So all they are is just the little check glass leaves. Now I did have to use a larger than regular jump ring because they're a little bit wide. See how they're the width of these is a little bit thicker than some of the other check glass leaves that maybe you've used. Um, and <clears throat> so for that, I needed a, a bigger jump ring to actually clear that space than just a six millimeter. So I believe this is either an eight or a 10 millimeter jump ring to go through there. And then our little bicones, cones, I'm just going to do simple loops with two eye pins. So I'm gonna grab an eye pin. <laughs> Gosh, Cooper, no. I'm actually gonna open it up. <laughs> Hush, be quiet. Shh. No, no talking. <laughs> no talking, Cooper. I'm gonna open up the eye pin part of one of my eye pins. And I'm gonna go ahead and thread it onto the jump ring. Just makes things a little bit easier so that I don't have to open the jump ring after I've added the bead. Okay, so there's that. Hold on a second. Okay, I'm going to thread on my bicone and now I'm gonna do a wrapped loop on the top. Okay, so I'm grabbing the wire, giving the wire a bend. <clears throat> okay, and I'm going to go up and over the top barrel of the pliers. OK, 
Okay. Now, in order to take that wire over to the other side, I've got to move this bottom barrel out of the way. So in order to do that, I'm just going to rotate my pliers and take the wire over to the other side. Okay. And now I'm going to wire wrap in that space between the loop that we created and the top of our bead. And I can get about three wire wraps in there. Okay. Now I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and trim off the excess. Okay. So there's one and we need one more of these. Okay. So I'm just going to repeat that process. Come in. I'm going to open up the loop on the eye pin. I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the jump ring that's attached to our leaf bead. Okay. And I'm going to thread on one of the bicones. cones. Excuse the glue that's on my fingers here. Okay. And I'm going to do another wrapped loop. Now you can do a simple loop. In fact, actually what I do. I didn't even realize I did simple loops on the top of these and did a, did a wrap loop. Let's do this one. Let's make this one a simple loop and I'll go back and fix the other one. Okay. So but that's okay. Cause you're going to get, you get to see both. So if I'm going to do a simple loop, I'm going to grab that wire, but I don't need that space that happens when we bend the wire over the top of our chain nose pliers. Right? So what I need to do is just bend the wire right where it is coming out of the bead. So I don't need that extra room. I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and I'm going to trim off. I'm going to leave myself about a fourth of an inch of wire. So I'm going to give that a trim and then I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers, grabbing that wire and I'm going to roll back towards the bead and that's going to create my simple loop, right? So there's a simple loop. Let's change this one out just so that they all, they all match, right? So I'm going to remove this one. I'm going to trim it off of this wire and grab an eye pin, maybe. Okay, so I'll grab another eye pin and we'll, we'll fix this one. Because the, the difference in them is actually very, very slight. But just the addition of those wire wraps makes that bead hang a little bit longer. So I want them all to be even, right? I don't want one of them to have a wrapped loop and the rest of them not. Cooper, be quiet. He's a sassy boy. Okay, so again, I'm going to fix this one by putting just a simple loop on this one. Can I show you my bracelet? Which bracelet would that be? <laughs> I bet I know which bracelet you're talking about. I'll show it to you here in just a second. Hold on. <laughs> the one Colleen made, Aww. yeah. Not the blue one. Not the blue one. All right. So, yep. And now Nicole's yelling it. Katie wants to see your bracelet. <laughs> Shouty Nicole. All right. So, I'll show you all my bracelets. Okay. So these ones over here on this hand, these ones Kathy made me, they're, um, what do you call those? Tila beads on, um, on stretchy. I love them so, so much. And then this one, Colleen made me and she just gave it to me today. Isn't it beautiful? It's these lava beads. It's so pretty. And look at the button. It's a love bracelet. It's a love bracelet. She gave it to me today. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, <laughs> I'm making her blush over there. Okay, so we have our green little leaves, right? And we are going to put those in our necklace, but we need some more of these little hangy things, right? So we're going to create some more of these, right? With these little connectors, these beautiful beads i don't even know what you call them they're on the the paper that comes with your bargain bead box i don't know what they're called but they're really cool and some of our little petals okay so we're going to attach all these but i've got to where are my okay so some of these need wire wrapping okay we'll do these two together okay so to do these we're going to cut 
And you can use another eye pin if you want to, but I like to do mine with my 22 gauge wire and make my own wrapped loops on either end. So I've cut myself a little bit more than I need. Actually, you only need about three and a half inches of your 22 gauge wire. I am using um, German style wire for this. I'm gonna come down on the wire about an inch and a half with my chain nose pliers, and I'm gonna give that wire a good bend. So I've got my little backward seven here. I'm gonna come in with my round nose pliers, and I'm gonna make a wrapped loop. So I'm grabbing the wire, it's running between the barrel of the pliers. And I'm going to take that wire up and over the top barrel of the pliers. Now, again, like we did earlier, I need to take that wire all the way over to close up my loop, but I can't because the bottom barrel of the pliers is in the way. So I'm just going to rotate and make that bottom barrel now the top barrel. That way I can guide the wire over. That's going to close up my loop, right? I'm going to switch hands and I'm going to wire wrap underneath the loop we made about three times, okay? And I'm gonna trim off the excess. So basically we've made ourselves an eye pin, but we've done it with our own wire and it's a wrapped loop instead of a simple loop. Okay, so trimming off and I'm gonna thread on one of these beads and I'm gonna repeat that. I'm gonna do a wrapped loop down here on the other end. So I'm grabbing the wire right where it is exiting the bead. I'm gonna bend the wire 90 degrees I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers. Okay. And again, same steps up and over, rotate the pliers, take the wire over, and then we're going to wrap in that space and we'll come in with our cutter tool and trim off the excess. We're going to repeat that with another bead, just the exact same thing here. Okay, so I'm gonna do another one with another piece of wire. So coming in, chain those pliers, bending the wire. Okay. Round those pliers up and over, rotate. And wire wrap. What are y'all talking about? Patty, what are you referring to? Because that I, I want to vote. <laughs> I'm voting with you. <laughs> Whatever it is, I like what you said. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to come in with my chain nose pliers. The Tila beads, or the Tila, I guess I call them Tila beads. They, they could be Tila. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I just did... Um, I just did my regular stretch knot with them. But yeah. Oof. Okay. So I just used my elasticity knot. Um, and I used two pieces. I used two pieces of it instead of using a single piece to go through. That's just too much, um, too much thinking for me. <laughs> Patty, yes, I agree. <laughs> Y'all are too funny. Y'all are too funny. So let me show you. So see, I just, they're just, they're like little barrel knots, basically, you know, and if you don't like them sticking out like that, um, you could use a be another, like a larger bead to tuck the knots into, but nobody ever sees that. Right. So, you know, I leave it like it is, but Leave it like it is. Okay, so now we're gonna build. We we're gonna build these little these little things right here, right, with our pedals and our connectors and the beads that we just wire wrapped with. So all you need to do is just get some six millimeter jump rings, or you can use four millimeter jump rings. It makes no difference. Just get yourself some jump rings. I just dropped one in the floor. And we're just going to take a jump ring, open a jump ring. We're going to thread on. Let's do, let's do the petal first because they're the most delicate. They're, they're really sturdy and strong, but 
always makes me a little a little nervous when I add a jump ring to something like that that's drilled through the front, right? Okay, and then I'm going to thread on one of the wraps loops on my bead, close that back, and then I'm going to use another jump ring to add my connector. So I'm going to hook it through one of the loops on my connector and hook it through the top wrapped loop. My bead, close that back, right? So now I have one of these to go here. We're going to make another one to go right in here. I feel like I'm missing something from this necklace. I don't quite know what it is, though. I'll have to take a look at the picture. Something is missing. Okay. So attach that. Nope, I'm sorry. We need our bead. Attach that. And another jump ring. Okay, and then our connector. Close that back. Okay, so we have those. I know what it is. Oh, that jump ring did not get closed well. Okay, so there's that. All right, so what we have, what we're missing here is these little guys <laughs> without a bead, right? So it makes these a little bit shorter than the, the longer ones that have the beads. So we're just gonna take some jump rings and attach these like this. So I, I do remember using all five of the petals. So attach here and then attach to the connector without a bead in the middle. Close that back. Just makes them a little bit so everything kind of hangs at different at different lengths, right? All right, so now we are going to build our our focal, and then I'll show you how to put together the links. So, starting from the center and working our way out, I'm going to open up one of these jump rings, the next one over from our center, and I'm going to thread on one of our green sections. The next one over is going to have one of our shortened sections with the petal with no extra bead. Okay. The next one over is going to be one of our longer sections with the addition of the bead. And then our last little section is one last little green. Okay. So when I lay it out, this is what this looks like on one side. Now we just want to repeat this over here on the other side so that our left side matches our right side. Okay. So the jump ring next to the center, it's going to be green. The next one is one of the short sections. The next one is another one of the green. I've got to find the opening here. Yeah, all elasticity needs to be pre-stretched. It doesn't matter if it's a longa or if it's elasticity or if it's that crystal stuff. Um, everything needs to be pre-stretched. Okay, and then our last little section. Here. All right, so now I know it looks like a mess until I lay it all out nice and flat. So this is our center section of our necklace, right? So you can see how we have the three longer sections. We've got our short ones and then we have, whoops, I missed that. I mixed these up. Um, we have our little greens in between here. Let me rearrange these two. Okay. And then I'll show you real quick how to put together the length of this. Because we're going to use those, those toggle rings and some more faux suede lace for this. Okay. 
Now it makes a little bit more sense when you look at it, <laughs> right? So we have our longer, our longer petal pieces, one in the middle and two on the outer edges. We've got our greens going in between here and then we have our shorter ones. Really, really pretty, okay? So now we are going to build on the outside here, okay? So I'm gonna move this down a little bit and we are going to attach our toggles with a little barrel knot. Okay, one of them's already done. So I'm gonna attach it and then I'm gonna show you how to do the other one. I dropped my jump ring in the floor though. Let's see here. Grab another jump ring. Okay, so for the one that's already done, just going to open a jump ring. I'm going to thread it on to the last link of the chain and onto the loop on that toggle ring and close that one back. And I'll show you how to finish the ends as well. But let's do this. Let's do um, our, our, our knotting with our lace first. Okay, so I've got a piece of faux suede lace here. It's about 12 inches. Uh, you can trim that up if it's a little bit too long. I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm going to thread it through our toggle ring at the halfway point is where I want it to fall right here. Okay. Now I'm going to tie a barrel knot over this with another piece of the faux suede lace. So I've cut myself um, a, another section of this. Mine's a little bit long. You really only need about four inches to do this. Okay. So let me switch it around this way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our short piece here and we're actually gonna lay one end of our short piece up against the two pieces that we've got already here, right? The long pieces of our necklace. Then we're gonna take our section that I just folded over, right? And I'm gonna loop it around all three of the pieces here. So not only am I looping around the length, but I'm also looping around that piece, it, its own, the own piece, its own piece. Does that make any sense at all? <laughs> See, there's the end of it. Now I've looped around everything. I've made those loops nice and large so that I can take the tail of it and go back the, uh, go through it the other direction. I, this is the most terrible explanation of this ever. I'm so sorry. Okay, so when I get the tail through, I'm going to pull on one end to pull out all of the slack, and then I'm going to pull on the other end. And as I'm pulling, gosh, uh, I'm going to make a mess is what I'm going to do. As I am pulling, I'm going to use my fingers to help cinch down that knot right? So you kind of push, push and pull, pull the ends, both sides. Okay. And then I want to pull it down close to the toggle. Okay. So you really have to manipulate that knot with your fingers. It's not going to just create a knot all on its own, right? You have to really kind of smush it into the shape that you want it to be, right? Now, I like to come in with my cutter tool and be sure that you're trimming off the short pieces, not your length here. I cut them off as close as I can get them to the knot. And then I come in with hypo cement. Now you can use more of your fabric glue if you want to, but you guys saw how gloppy and gluey mine was. So I'm going to use the hypo cement and I actually will take, let's see, where's my hypo cement at? Oh goodness. Now I can't find it. Hold on. Okay. So I will take my hypo cement and because it has that nice little precision tip on it, I will stick it down into the actual knot itself, right? I'm sticking it all the way into that knot and giving it a little squeeze to distribute some of that glue down inside there. 
I want it to be next to the piece that I just cut off to make it nice and secure, right? And then I'm going to come down here on the other end and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stick that precision tip down into the knot itself and then add some little glue dots around the piece that I cut and let that dry. Okay. All right, now the only thing we have left to do here is attach this to the other side of our necklace and then we're going to put our cord ends on and it will be complete. So take another jump ring here. Jump ring there and through the loop here. Whoops. And I'm going to close that back. Okay. All right. Now we're going to come to the ends of our pieces of our faux suede lace. I like to take them all in my fingers, stretch them all out and make sure they're all even. And if they're not even, then I come in and trim them all off to make them all pretty much the same length, as close as I can get. Right. All right, now my favorite way to finish off faux suede lace is with these fold over cord ends because they're so easy to use. You don't have to add glue to these if you don't want to, but you can if you feel like it needs it. So I'll take one side of my necklace with my two ends of my cord. Okay, make sure that the ends are laying side by side. I'm going to lay those in to the cord end cover, and then I'm going to take that flap and put the flap over the top of the two cords. And now I still have to fold over the two edges, right? But it's that one cord or that one flap in the middle that really keeps everything nice and secure. So you just take your pliers, pinch down on either side, right? And you just want to bite down on it real tight. Okay, so there's one done. It's got a loop in it, it's already ready for a clasp. So I'm going to use a set of jump rings here. Add a jump ring. And I'm actually going to use two jump rings here. So I'm going to close this one back because it's a toggle. So sometimes the toggle needs a little extra room. So some sometimes on the bar side, I'll use more than one jump ring. Okay, so there's two jump rings and there's the bar part of the toggle. And again, this is the one that came with our beads. So it's another one of these flowers. So it all matches together, right? And now we're going to do the same thing over here on the other end of our necklace. We're going to bring the two ends together. We're going to bring in this fold over cord end. So Holly, I get mine from Beadalon, but you can also get them on Amazon. I've seen them. Um, I don't know that I've seen them in any of the box stores, but I'm sure they have them. I just really like them with because they have this extra fold over. I feel like it just really adds a little extra security because you know how some of the other ones, it's just the two edges that you fold over. This middle flap to me is like, okay, well, if I have that middle flap, I don't need any extra glue. All right. So closing that over, folding this one over as well. Give it a good squeeze. Okay. And now I'm ready to add a jump ring. and my toggle ring. I'm not sure what size they are. All right, and there you go. So now we have a beautiful clasp. You guys know that's different for me because I usually just grab a, a lobster clasp and call it a day. But this one, you know, it came in the bargain bead box and it matches and we used the two other ones as part of our design. So it only made sense that we use it to finish off our design. But that's it, you guys, that's our necklace, right? It's lightweight because of the faux suede lace. There is still a ton of beads left over that you can make all kinds of projects with. I'm going to turn you around and I'm going to show you what it looks like on the bust. So let me back here to the front camera, get you guys back around. Okay hang this up so you can see it. So pretty. 
I may actually tie it just to make it a little shorter. Now for the length, you don't have to use more of the suede lace. You can use chain if you want to. Um, I just was really feeling this kind of leathery look. Just keeps it really kind of lightweight and airy so that it doesn't, it's not a heavy piece to wear. Let's separate everything out so that it, it's really a beautiful, fun, you know, just a statement piece. If, you, if you've got this on, you don't need a whole lot of anything else, right? Just a little pair of earrings and you can call it a day. I don't know that I would necessarily like layer this with other things, but I might just depending on if I'm feeling a little extra or not. But I hope you guys like this one. I, I realize this design is not going to be for everybody, but this was all simple techniques that we've done together before. The addition to this one was the barrel knots, which we haven't done in a long time, and the adding of the faux suede lace to the chain, which we haven't done. I don't think we've ever done together. Um, we may have, but it's been a while. So um, yeah, just simple, simple techniques, just putting them all together to create a fun statement piece that you can wear on its own. I would definitely wear this with jeans. You know how I am though. I wear sparkly stuff with like my sweatpants. So there's no, <laughs> I'm definitely not the measure for where you would wear this, right? <laughs> I will wear this to the grocery store, of course. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. I hope I have inspired you. And for those of you who have the bargain bead box, I hope that I have inspired you to a, a, a way to use your beads. For those of you who do not subscribe to the bargain bead box, maybe I have enticed you to sign up for the bargain bead box. They are a really great company. It is a, it is a small business and their customer service is top notch. And the people at bargain bead box, I got to tell you, they work really, really hard. They've had some struggles this year as have a lot of small businesses um, dealing with the effects of the pandemic. And um, so my my heart goes out to them because I know that they are working really, really hard to continue to put together these boxes for you guys. And our support of them means a lot to them. So um, I, I highly, highly recommend them if you haven't checked them out. All right. So that is it for me today. I hope that you guys have enjoyed the project. I'm so glad that I got to spend today with you guys. I missed you earlier this week. I'll be back with you guys tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time for our Feel Good Friday show where we put together a fun, easy to recreate, instant gratification jewelry. And you guys, I've got a lot in store for tomorrow, a lot. So you don't wanna miss tomorrow's show. Set your reminders and be here for it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see you here. You guys have a wonderful rest of your afternoon and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye guys.